Okay, so we are back to refined painting. We can see the different layers here. We have our just flat 100% color, and then our refined paint, which is a lower opacity on top that kind of merges and works between, gives us more definition. But notice where I haven't done much of that on the hair, on the, the bridge of the nose, underneath the nose, the kind of Cupid's bow on the chin, and nothing on the shirt. So remember, you want to try to work the whole thing. So don't blaze ahead and try to do a, a perfectly realistic eye without addressing some of these other things. So on this refined paint layer, and I'm careful to lock my other layers so I don't paint somewhere I'm not supposed to. I can put in his collar, put in some of the shadows under his chin, give his body a little bit more movement. And layering up these pinks and purples, they should become more interesting. And painting is just like drawing, except it's with shape and with color instead of with lines and pencil. But you try to have that same kind of freedom of movement and not judging yourself too harshly as you're doing it. The beauty of using these customized brushes is that they're soft edged. And so like the eyes, everything feels soft. You don't always need to contain everything. This is very different than digital coloring in that we don't have an outline that contains everything. So your shapes can get kind of blurred out, and sometimes that's good. And instead of using the eraser or anything, you can just paint, paint something back. Bring the paint back in. make a solution with more color. And it will tend to get more and more um, representational as you work. Colors will tend closer and closer to each other unless you really make an effort to keep them strong and saturated and different. And the more you work on it, the more and more refined it becomes. to the point where it can get overworked, and that's a problem. And so the biggest mistake uh, people make with digital painting when they're learning it is that they overwork one area. So you, you have to kind of work on everything at once, not just the interesting parts. And don't be afraid of making mistakes. It's all about being open to what happens. Now, if you're really happy with a certain um, version of it and you don't want to lose it, you can always just make a new layer. In fact, you can even duplicate that layer and just turn it off. So let's say I really like this now. I don't want to lose it, but I want to still, still be able to build up on top of it. Well, I can just do Command J and then lock it and turn it off, just like I do in Illustrator, right? And then keep building on top of this one. Now, I still haven't changed my brush settings really at all. I'm not even making my brush any bit smaller, and I'm not zooming in a lot. Those are all things to get more detail I could do. But do as much as you can with the biggest possible brush for as long as you can. That's my advice. You will be happier with the result. A lot of it's just about kind of building up a texture. Because if I zoom in, the painting looks pretty good from a distance, but you zoom in and you see the texture, it's, it still looks pretty like sponge painting-like. 
doesn't have a lot, doesn't have the visual interest of an actual painting yet, like this, with all those variations. So I've still got work to do for sure. Hit Command S every once in a while to save your work. And then just keep going. And I have to decide if I want this kind of expression on his face or this. And I kind of like that I have something in between. It's not based on either, either image. And still kind of looks like him. <laughs> Now the nice thing about the lower opacity brush is just the more you hit the same area, the stronger that opacity will be. So you're not stuck only painting at 60%, it's just your first pass is 60%, and then you decide if you wanna keep that going or not. And now I'm basically just stealing colors from myself. because each time I paint at the lower opacity, I'm creating new tones that I can steal and use. So that can soften and transition. And just like it's, it's easier to desaturate colors than to, um, to dull them, or it's, it's easy, easier to dull colors than to intensify them, so I start pretty saturated, it's also a whole lot easier to soften edges than to harden them, right? So I, I use a pretty hard edge brush throughout, but layering it up it suggests small, small edges. Let's see, Let's work in this mouth a little bit. bit of teeth coming through. So even though his hair is just white and gray, I think I'm gonna put some color into that as well. Some purples, some blues, some pinks. 
even if they get mostly painted over, then they'll be at the edges there, and they'll be more compelling. And you can really learn the most about color theory by trying out these different kind of strategies of color and seeing what effect they have. Whenever you feel like you're outlining something, try to think in terms of shape instead of line. All right, let's see. It helps to squint and see where the big shadows are. And then a tool that um, a lot of digital painters use is the navigator. So you can make your navigator kind of big. Sometimes people put their navigator on top of their layers. I think I'm going to do that. And that allows you to kind of zoom in and move around. But the most important reason for it is actually so you can always see a little version of your painting. Because very often you're zoomed in here, especially as you start to refine it. So it's making some good progress. I'm going to save it there. And I've been working at 60% opacity, about 73% flow. And it's going to put in a few of these shadows that are needed when you squint. And once you get to the point where you're being pretty careful with your brush strokes, then you want to reassess a little bit. So I might want to go back to a different reference and then be informed by that a little bit, which doesn't have quite such strong lighting. Can help me with this chin part, which I've been kind of neglecting. I get to see how it reads a little bit smaller. Also, the shadows here around the neck and collar. Put those in. darkest darks. Remember, I'm only using them at 60%, so they're still pretty safe. All right, now I get to maybe have some fun with it. So I'm going to paint with 60% white just a little bit for the highlights. 
I said, don't paint with pure white, but I'm not because I'm painting 